Welcome to this Zeiss mount change tutorial video. Today I'm going to show you how to change the mount on your CP3 lenses. The same tutorial also applies to CP2 lenses, compact zooms and the LWZ3. So let's get started. If you're a camera operator like me, you might shoot with different cameras every day. On one day you might shoot with one camera, on the other day with another one, depending on what the job requires. Or you might be given another camera by a colleague or a rental house, or you might actually upgrade your camera to a different brand, a different model in the future. Well, the problem is all of these cameras have different lens mounts. But if you have a Compact Prime 3, you actually are able to change the mount by yourself. Because these lenses have five different mounts available, which basically means that you're upgradable for eternity in the future, because you can use them on all kinds of different cameras. So the investment that you made in these lenses is quite secure. And the changing of the mount is actually quite easy. Today I'm going to show you how. Now let's get started with the lens mount change. In this case on the CP3, we have an EF mount CP3 here and we want to change to a PL mount. For that we need the interchangeable mount set kit from Zeiss for PL mount and that contains the PL mount itself, uh, the screws that you need for it and the shims. The only other tool that you will need is a T6 Torx wrench with a torque of 0.4 Newton meters. We recommend that you get this tool from Zeiss because then you can be sure that it's the right one for your lenses and you don't risk damaging them. Last but not least, you will also need a back focus chart or so-called Siemens star to correctly adjust the back focus of your lenses after changing the mount. Now let's get this operation started. First, let's remove the rear lens cap. Then you can see the EF mount, which is attached to the lens with four Torx screws. Let's remove them. Now that all the four screws are loosened, you can simply lift off the mount and put it next to your lens. I would leave all the Torx screws inside the mount so you know where they belong. Now we can see that there's another little ring in here, which is the so-called spacer ring. Now the spacer ring is needed for EF mounts and also for E mounts. In case of the E mount, you can see that the spacer here is even much bigger. Now to take off that EF spacer, which we do not need for the PL mount, you need to untighten another eight Torx screws. Now that I'm done with untightening all those screws, I can simply lift that EF spacer and also put it next to my lens. Now, there's one little thing to mention about those screws. The standard screw that is used in most of the CP3 lens mounts is an M2 8mm screw. There's only one exception. In the E-mount spacer, we need a screw that is a little bit longer, and that's the 10mm M2 screw. In all the other lens mounts, the 8mm is standard. Now that I have removed the spacer, you can see the shims. Just leave them in place. Don't touch any of the other screws that you can see there. Now take the PL mount and align it correctly with the lens barrel. In order to do that, just check where the little groove is on the other side of the mount and align it with the little screw on the barrel. And turn it slowly until you hear a little click. Now we're perfectly in place. As I mentioned before, in case of the PL mount, we do not need a spacer. Now if you're switching to an EF or F mount, make sure that the notch is aligned with the index mark, like here. And again, the E mount is the exception here. Here, the blue dot has to be aligned with the index mark. Now it's time to take out the screws and attach the mount. Tighten the screws with your T6 Torx screwdriver. Because you're using the right T6 Torx screwdriver now with 0.4 Newton meters of torque, you cannot over tighten your screws. If you only rely on your monitor or viewfinder to focus your lenses, you're practically done now and you can skip the next step. If you are relying on the focus markings on your lens though, you have to shim your lenses. Let me show you how that works. To get started with that, it's time to put that lens on a camera and see if the back focus is correct. Attach a back focus chart to a wall and choose the correct testing distance appropriate for the CP3 lens you're using. Please make sure you're pointed straight at the focusing chart. The correct testing distances for each CP3 lens are described in the Zeiss mount change instructions document. Open the aperture all the way on your lens and set the focus on the lens barrel to the distance you measured from the back focus chart on the wall. Then it's time to check on your camera if the test chart is fully in focus. If the chart is not perfectly in focus, don't touch the lens barrel. You should rather move the camera until the test chart is perfectly in focus. 
If the focus has changed to achieve perfect focus, you have to adjust the flange focal distance of your lens by using these colored shims. There is a table for each CP3 on the Zeiss website, which will tell you what shims to use for what distance. To add or change shims, first you have to take off the mount again. After you take off the mount, you might see some other shims that are already in there. Depending on the table, it will tell you what shims to use, so you might have to remove them or just add other ones. In this case, we're just going to add one. So be really delicate with these shims, they are very thin. We are carefully take it in my hand and then check where the openings are. I try to put it on top at the right position. There's only one way it usually fits. Here we go. So all, all the screw holes are open and free and we can just put the mount back again like we did it before. We check where the little groove is and align it with the little screw. And then we attach the mount again. After you have reassembled your lens, put it back onto your camera and check the focus distance again. If the Siemens star is now in focus, you have successfully adjusted your lens. If not, you just have to have another go with your shims. So as you can see, it's not hard to change the lens mount from one to the other on the Zeiss CP3. It's actually quite easy. And I'm not a Zeiss lens technician, I'm just a camera operator. And the coolest thing is, you don't have to go to a service or rental center to get it done. You can do it yourself and with a little practice, you're really fast with it. Thanks for watching.